This project for the sixth grade science students is called Energy City. The Energy City project touches on these teaks, plate tectonics and geological features, energy sources, both non-renewable and renewable, and we also talk about conservation methods. Um, in this project, the students get to choose a real city in the world that is located on an earthquake fault line or near a volcano that is active. In the project, there are three main components. The students uh, re did self-guided research to take notes on the different energy sources. They chose a city in the world that is located next to either an active volcano or on an, a fault line that could cause an earthquake. And they researched some geological information about the, the problems that could be caused by being located so close to either a volcano or an earthquake fault line. where students are required to plan out a new layout for the city if an earthquake were to occur or if a volcano were to erupt, since they're located close to one of those two geological features. The students have the choice to create a 2D poster, a 3D model. And we also have solar power plants and solar energy from like in the office buildings and in the park to generate electricity to like feed, like give energy to like the office buildings and half the places. Then for our non-renewable, we have natural gas power, power plant, which generates natural gas to all the houses and the apartments and the grocery store and that kind of stuff. Or they could use uh, games that they're familiar with or technological uh, tools such as Minecraft or Eden or Google SketchUp. So we're going to start with that energy source. It's so really our, our main energy source is our volcano. We mainly use this for um, geothermal energy. All of the groups were also required to house all of their research information and present it on a Weebly website. Students gave a presentation of their model through a gallery walk where um, all of the students were able to do a peer evaluation on each group and therefore each group received peer evaluation from all of the other groups that came by to see their models. Um, the next part of the presentation was to present their website and this was a traditional presentation format where each group came to the front of the room and shared their website with the entire class. The third type of presentation was to send an email to a city planner or an engineer that might give them some feedback about the ideas that they came up with on their website. My favorite part of the project was building the model because we got to come up with all these creative ideas on how to build it and it was totally hands-on. Like, we weren't sure how to build the volcano, so we bought a square block of foam and then we, we like shaved it until it looked like a volcano shape and then we put model magic over it. So that was really cool, just coming up with these different ideas and I love the project because it was totally hands-on. I felt that this was a lot better than pencil and paper teaching because it put you in the shoes of the engineer and architects who would um, be building the city and it really gave you like another side to the story. It being so interactive, uh, being able to have it like hands-on and able to explore and I mean like everybody's not doing the same thing. If you had pencil and paper everybody else would be doing the same worksheets and you're not taking anything away from that. This type of project really engages the students and I think that that really gives them a deeper understanding of the content um, as opposed to the traditional classroom approach. Designing this type of project may seem like a lot of work but I really feel like it is totally worth it. In the end, the students have learned not just the material they're supposed to learn for science but they learned all kinds of technological skills, collaboration skills, teamwork, they learned how to create an appropriate email to an adult somewhere else in the world and how to respond to that. These are all skills that we want our students to have in their future jobs and for that reason I think that all teachers should 
definitely try to do a type of project like this problem-based learning.